everyone, welcome to Nursing with CG. In this video, I'm going to talk about the easiest way of doing vital signs. Whenever you do vital signs, you check the pain first because the pain can alter the vital signs. If any patient had any surgery, if anyone has any pain, it can alter the vital signs. It can increase the blood pressure, it can increase the heart rate, it also can increase the respiratory rate. So you need to assess the pain before you do vital signs. How you assess the pain? You ask the patient from 0 to 10, what is the number? Okay, so whenever any patient is complaining about a pain, you are going to ask the details of the pain by using a mnemonic PQRST. So P stands for provo what provokes the pain? What is the reason for pain? You have to fix the underlying cause, right? Then Q quality. Is it stabbing, is it sharp pain, is it dull pain? And you are looking for the rate, the, the rate from 0 to 10. The severity of the pain. Then you are going to ask, when did you start the pain? So vital sign, there are five steps. Very, very easy. The first step, check for any precaution. Whenever you go to patient's room, you are going to check on the door, is there any precaution, any contact isolation? Is there any airborne precaution? You have to wear the PP according to the precaution. Then you are going to introduce yourself. After that, the third step, you are going to do hand hygiene. Then you are going to identify the patient with two universally accepted ID uh, identifications, your patient's name and uh, the date of birth. And also you can ask about allergy. Then the fifth step, you are going to perform the assessment. There are five steps to check the vital sign. The first thing you are going to check the temperature. You use the thermometer and you are looking for temperature. 98.6 degree that is normal for adult oral temperature and 100.4 or greater than 100.4 is considered as abnormal oral temperature. Before you do the oral temperature, the first thing you are going to ask the patient, did you eat or drink any cold or hot thing in the last 30 minutes? If not, this, you can proceed. If yes, you have to wait or you have to use a different route. You can have axillary temperature. So whenever you do the axillary temperature, you have to add one degree. The second component of vital sign is pulse. Pulse, you are checking the radial pulse, brachial pulse, or any other side you can check. You, you check normally radial pulse for complete one minute, and we expect between 60 and 100 beats per minute. If less than 60 means bradycardia, if greater than 100 is considered as tachycardia. We want in between 60 to 100 beats per minute. Plus 2 is considered as normal. 0 is the absence of pulse. Plus 3 and plus 4 considered as bounding pulse. And that is abnormal. And also you count the apical pulse. Apical pulse, you know the landmark. That is going to be 5th intercostal space at the mid-clavicular line. Point of maximum impulse. You count the pulse there with your stethoscope one complete minute. The next is respiration. For normal adults between 12 to 20 respiration per minute. You look at the chest rise and fall. Then blood pressure, you check the blood pressure with appropriate cuff and the expectation is systolic blood pressure 120 and diastolic 80. So 120 or 80. The millimeter of mercury that is the normal blood pressure of an adult. Oxygen saturation, you are going to check with pulse oximeter. You can keep the pulse oximeter on the finger, make sure that there is no nail polish. Pulse oximeter reading, normally we expect greater than 90. Anytime if less than 90 is a medical emergency, you have to pay attention, you have to address it immediately. Hi John, my name is CG, I'm going to be a nurse today, okay? Mm -hmm. I'm going to take the vital signs on you. Is that okay with you? Yeah. Okay, let me do my hand hygiene. Mm -hmm. 
Have you had anything by mouth for the last uh, 30 minutes? No. Any heart or cold drink? Mm -mm. No? Okay, very good. Um, I'm going to keep this under the tongue. Do you have any loose tooth or anything? No. Okay. Okay, hold it for 30 seconds. Okay, very good. 98.4. Okay. I'm going to check your pulse. Okay. Mm -hmm. I will check it for one complete minute. Now I'm going to take the blood pressure. Use the right cuff for the right patient. And when you apply the cuff, make sure that that arrow here pointing out parallel to the brachial artery, two inch above the brachial artery. Keep the cuff and make it tight. In two step method, the first thing you are going to palpate the radial pulse and you are going to inflate the cuff until you don't feel the radial pulse so by 130 I didn't feel the pulse then I'm going to add 30 to that so 130 plus 30 is going to be 160 in the second step you're going to feel the brachial pulse first and you keep the diaphragm of the stethoscope over the pulse by using your dominant hand, inflate the cuff up to 160. Slowly release it. I heard a sound at 110. It started at 110 and it disappeared at 70. So his blood pressure is 110 over 70. Before you apply the pulse oximeter, make sure that there is no nail polish or fake nails. You apply the pulse oximeter over the nail bud and you check the pulse oximeter reading. Above 90 is fine. If less than 90 is a medical emergency, please notify. That's all about checking vital signs. Stay tuned for the next video and please don't forget to subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. Bye everyone.